Hey my YouTube friends and family, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Marcy in the kitchen once more and today we're going to be making some gizada. This video was requested by one of my regular subscribers, um, Kathy Chin. Thank you so much. You have requested this for a while now and I finally get the chance to make it. Thank you for being patient and if you're new on my channel guys, please go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Don't forget to turn your notification bell on as well so that you don't miss any of my uploads. And to my returning subscribers, I do not take any of you for granted. I appreciate every single one of you. Welcome back to my channel and let's make some delicious gizada. So in this bowl, I have two huge juicy coconuts and I am going to use one and a half of that. And in this bowl, I have four cups of all-purpose flour which was kept in the fridge overnight and this butter was in the freezer for about an hour. I also have my iced cold water and my salt. I'm going to use a teaspoon of salt. So the first thing I'm going to do is sift my flour to make sure that it's nice and refined and then I'm going to add my salt and my butter. So after adding my salt, I just make sure that I use a whisk to combine everything properly and then I'm going to use my fingers to combine the butter. So remember the butter was in the freezer, right? So it's extremely cold. You just have to be patient and I'm just going to use my fingers to work it into the flour until I have like a crumb like consistency and then I'm going to add my water and I add my water gradually by using this tablespoon. So this is the consistency that you're looking for, nice and crummy. I am just going to gradually add my iced cold water and yeah, you don't want to pour it. You want to add it gradually because you don't want it to be too soft. You just want to work the cold water into the dough until it comes together. So even though the video was edited, I when I was editing the video, I counted every tablespoon so that I could show you so that I could tell you the amount of water that I use and I ended up using 18 tablespoons of iced cold water. I had to edit out most of it because the video was 40 minutes long and I am not on YouTube to waste any one time. So I cut out the least important stuff. But yeah, it's eight, 18 tablespoons of water with four cups of flour. So now that most of it is combined, I'm just going to put away my spatula and use my hand so that I can have a better feel of what I'm doing and how much liquid is in the bowl. So it has enough liquid, I'm just going to spin it around to make sure that everything in the bowl is um, combined. All right. So now, as you can see, it is not a dry dough and it's not overly wet, you know, it's not soggy. It's perfect. So I'm just going to put it in my film wrap and wrap it up real nice and put it in my fridge. Mine was in my fridge for about two hours because I was busy in the kitchen doing other stuff. So it was in there for two hours, but you can keep it up in, keep it in there for up to an hour before you take it out to use it. All right. So now we're just going to put it away and we're going to do our coconuts. So when I was grating my coconut, I use the extremely fine grated part to, and I also use the finely shredded part so that I have two different textures of coconut. You don't necessarily have to do that, but I wanted some long pieces so that I can have a nice crunch in my grater cake. So I use the finely shredded part and the regular grated part that we use when we're grating our coconut on a regular basis. All right. So. It's up to you if you want to do that, you don't necessarily have to. So now I'm just going to move on to my spices and I'm starting off with my nutmeg. I'm just going to grate a teaspoon of that and I'll place everything up on the screen. For you guys and also in my description box so you can go down in my description box and get the full recipe okay and all the ingredients so for my other spices it's gonna be cinnamon powder I'm gonna add a mixed spice of vanilla and some almond essence and that's it so when I'm adding my spices you're gonna see me add one teaspoon of cinnamon powder 
but I ended up using another teaspoon because after tasting it it felt like it needed some more spices and I really really love cinnamon powder so that's the one I went in with So now I'm going to go in with my brown sugar and I'm going to be using one and a half cups but um, it all depending on the amount of coconut mixture that you have so you might need more or less depending alright and guys remember we're all Jamaicans and we know we know gizada, we know drops, we know greater cake and we all know that they are a sweet treat so when you're consuming this make sure that you consume in moderation because it is sweet all right so just be mindful of that and remember it's the brown sugar that give it that nice brown color so if you don't have any brown sugar you may want to add just a little bit of molasses to let it caramelize with your coconut all right so now I'm just gonna add my water um, let it heat up for a little and then I'm gonna add my coconut mixture I'm gonna saute it on the stove top for about 10 minutes you don't need to do it for more than 10 minutes because it's gonna go in the oven all right so it, it will finish cook inside of the oven and you don't want it to be dry so don't overcook it on the stove top so while you're cooking this remember to look out for lumps of coconut and take them out and yeah I'm also tasted too to see if it have enough um, spice or sugar and go ahead and add if you need to so as you can see I added an extra teaspoon of cinnamon powder so in all it was two teaspoon so after 10 minutes of cooking I set this aside and I cover with my pot cover so that it can stay moist until I'm ready to use it So it's been two hours, my dough is ready. I'm just gonna make sure that my surface is clean to work on. I'm gonna spread some flour on the bottom and on the top of my dough and use my rolling pin to roll it out. So when I roll it out, I didn't use any measurement or anything. I just used my judgment and like give it like a one inch amount of thickness. And after I roll it out, I just use a soup bowl and cut out um, the amount that I want with my soup bowl. I was trying to go for like one per person in the house so it's up to you you can make them big or you can make them small my first set was big because I used my soup bowl but um, for the second set I made them smaller so it's up to you depending on the size that you want So after cutting it out, I just dust a little flour on it so that it's easier to work with when I'm pinching. But what I would just suggest is pinch it when it's in your baking sheet. When it's on your baking sheet, go ahead and pinch it at that time because after you pinch it here, that like what I'm doing, you don't want to mess it up when you're taking it up. All right. So as you can see, I just use my index finger, put it to the edge. And then use my other index finger and my thumb to do the pinching and I pinch them like one inch apart from each other so that they can look nice and uniformed so I use my right index finger as a guard to guard the sides and then use my left index finger and my left thumb to do the pinching So 
so after I'm finished pinching the side I just go around again and make sure that all the pinch is nice and secure and then I place it in my container but as I said before make sure that it's already in your container before you start the pinching so that you don't have to disturb your pattern all right and after pinching them I am going to use my fork to pierce some holes in the bottom so that when it's baking it doesn't bloat up so I'm just going to show you one more time um, the pinching process and this time we're going to do it on the baking sheet all right and what I did after pinching all of my gizada dough I placed them in my oven for 10 minutes so that they can stay firm before adding my coconut and then I add the coconut and put them in the oven for another 20 minutes and my oven was preheating at 350 degrees and remember that your coconut is already pre-cooked so you're just gonna pop in your crust for up 10 minutes until they're nice and firm and then you add your coconut mixture and pop them back in the oven until your crust is golden brown or until 20 minutes depending on your oven I don't want to give you any time limit just make sure that your oven light is on and you're watching them and they don't overcook all right because they don't want your coconut to dry out as well Right, so I pop them in the oven and firm them up for 10 minutes now I'm just going to add my coconut mixture and pop them back in the oven for another 15 to 20 minutes depending on your oven heat so I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up all my gizada cups and then when I come back I will be taste testing the gizadas So here they are guys they're out and they're done and I'm just gonna show you what the crust look like it's really hot <laughs> so it kind of looked dry on the camera I don't know what's happening with my lighting so I'm just gonna break in it and show you guys how moist it is if you want to ensure that it is really moist and before you put it in the cups make sure that you test it and if it's dried out just add a little coconut milk add a little coconut milk stir it up before you put them in your cups just to ensure that it is nice and moist like this one all right so i'm just gonna break into the other half to show you guys how moist it is because you know the camera kind of make it look dry the camera not doing any justice at all so look at that it's really nice and moist thank you so much i hope you enjoyed this video kathy and everyone else that watched thank you for clicking on the video don't forget to like comment share and subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet stay safe stay blessed stay humble and i'll see you guys in my next video